Welcome to session two of Sustainable Use of Natural Resources. In this session, we'll be looking at the plastic revolution and how the rise in convenience has caused a massive surge in natural resource use. So, if you think about a world without plastic, it's quite difficult to imagine. I mean, look around you. There's probably plastic things all around you where you are. There's probably plastic in front of you. You're probably watching this on a computer that has plastic components. Plastic has really only been used since the 1950s in a commercial fashion. And it's quite difficult now to stand and think about a life without plastic. The slide clicker I'm holding is made of plastic. I have a bracelet around my wrist, which is made of plastic. There is plastic absolutely everywhere. But if we look at things that were made for our convenience, when, back in the 1930s, 1940s, when you went shopping and you went to your local convenience store, there weren't supermarkets, but there were convenience stores, People took their shopping home in paper bags. And then the plastic revolution happened. Plastic bags were everywhere. Plastic bags are incredibly bad for the environment. They're very detrimental to uh, lots of animals' health because they end up um, in landfill and washed up. I mean, it's only very recent that you've even been able to recycle plastic carrier bags. You, did, you, wouldn't, you weren't able to recycle plastic carrier bags until very recently. And we're now seeing a shift back towards paper bags because plastic bags are produced in huge numbers every year. Over, over a trillion every year are made. And they take a thousand years to fully biodegrade, fully break down. A thousand years for one carrier bag, one plastic carrier bag. And the net weight of plastic bags discarded every year is 3.5 million tonnes. If you think how little a carrier bag weighs, it's a huge amount of carrier bags. They're not being reused, they're being discarded, they're being got rid of. And not all of them are recycled. The plastic revolution has changed the way that people act and the way that people use things. Plastic bottles are everywhere. Bottled water is everywhere. And everything has become more convenient. Think about coffee. Coffee is probably my favourite drink. But I don't have a coffee pod machine, I have coffee. I have an espresso machine. But it's a uh, hand press one. So you don't use power for it. When people made it easier to make an espresso by making a pod that you just put in a machine, press go, and there's your coffee. But what happens to these pods? It's been quite big recently, the, the K-cup phenomenon. People coming out and talking about K-cups and really, because they can't be recycled, they're incredibly detrimental to the environment. Now, not all coffee pod machines are the same. Some of them can be recycled, but it's not easy. And it's another example of convenience making things easier and quicker for us, but they are incredibly detrimental to our environment. The coffee that they make is no better, but it's just easier for us. But is that convenience worth the cost to the environment? That's what we need to think about. If you look at this picture, we have 
a kid, a boy, walking amongst piles and piles of plastic. And this isn't staged, this is an everyday occurrence for some people. There are places in Africa, there are places in South America, where there are mountains and mountains of plastic. There are seashores that are just plastic as far as you can see. There is so much plastic waste that people can't do anything with because certain countries don't have the same recycling facilities in Africa, in lots of Africa, certainly in Kenya and Tanzania and lots of East African countries. Sodas are still drunk out of glass bottles and then recycled. And slowly, slowly, plastic bottles are being introduced into these countries and we're seeing that less glass bottles are being used so they're moving from a sustainable way of drinking sodas with a continuous supply of reusing glass bottles to a less sustainable way of drinking sodas by having plastic bottles. Again, more convenient because you don't have to return it to the shop you bought it from. So, convenience versus sustainability. It's, I'm not saying all plastic's bad, but I'm saying that we need to think about the balance between what we can do and what is convenient. This is um, a slide from, the picture's taken from wastewaters. Uh, and it's looking at where the largest amounts of plastic are turning up in water. Plastic in our oceans is a huge problem. It's incredibly detrimental to our sea life. Um, fish, whales, dolphins, it's incredibly bad for them. There is so much plastic and it can't go anywhere. It can't break down. And it just forms these tiny beads. It breaks down into tiny, tiny beads that essentially, slowly, poison our sea life. We have to do something about the plastic in our oceans. It's just getting worse and worse. But what can we do? The plastic revolution has changed the world. The last 65 years, we have seen petroleum-based products absolutely soar. If you think about your life, so your home life, your work life, your school life, your university life, think about your life. Think about everything around you. And then think about maybe your family or your community. Think about what you do within your institution. Think about just how many plastic things you come into contact with day in, day out. Think about all of the, the plastic that is around you and just how much it would take for you to completely de-plastic your life. Because it's not something that's easy to do. Plastic is so convenient and it's everywhere. In this session, we're going to be looking at plastic and some of the problems of plastic and some of the solutions and where plastic has been revolutionary. Things like 3D printers, where plastic is changing the way that we do things, but also looking at things like uh, the multitude of mass-produced plastic toys that go into things like party bags for children who never use them. Um, so we'll be looking at the positives and negatives of plastics. And so I hope you go away and do the reading, watch some films. I've put some links up for you to have a little bit more of an explore about the plastic revolution. Think about what plastic means to you and uh, hopefully we'll have some good fruitful discussions. Enjoy it, and I will see you for session three. Thank you.